as a church, we are continuing to grow in three specific areas. If you've been with us over the last few weeks, you know that we are now engaging in the pursuit of discipleship. You know that we are pursuing the purple uh, or using the purple book to do so. And we have three very clear goals that we are uh, uh, trying to attain through this process. Number one, again, we want to be a disciple making church. In other words, we want to do what it is that Jesus told us to do, which was to go and to make disciples. Next thing that we want to do is we want to increase evangelism. Amen. We want to increase evangelism. We want you to be so well equipped that you know the word, that you are comfortable and you are versed in the word, that you know what? Even if God says uh, the next time you're in Walmart, hey, talk to that guy right there. That you'll have the confidence to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and to move on that as well. And the third thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to increase our biblical literacy. Amen. We're, we're, we're trying to, 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 to know the word more and more and more. And, and like we've always discovered, it's like we think we know a little something and we get into the word. And we're like, oh, man, I didn't know nearly as much as I thought I did. So we want to increase our biblical literacy. And again, because we are talking about establishing a solid foundation in our lives. Amen. Um, we're doing this through our groups and, and as we learned a little bit last week, it's so necessary to build a solid foundation. Why is that? Because the storms of life will come. Amen. Amen. They're going to come. They're going to hit that house. So it's just a matter of what we are built on. And so, so we are uh, building on a solid foundation. So uh, just to recap a little bit, if you haven't been with us, uh, the very first week we talked about a common problem that you and I both share, and that is the problem of sin. We talked about the problem of sin and, 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 and what we discover is for that problem of sin that we all have, the only solution is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and so we built on that last week. And, and, and so we're, we're laying the foundation again, the, the foundation of salvation. We built on top of that last week by talking about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 In other words, what we stopped to take a, a second to look at is, is we really wanted to ask the question and of ourselves, and, and that's simply this, is Jesus just our Savior, or is Jesus our Lord and our Savior? Right, right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, you remember last week we talked about having a monopoly mindset. Right. We talked about having a monopoly mindset. In other words, like the game monopoly, uh, do we see Jesus just as our free get out of hell card? But we don't want a, him to be Lord. Right. Because the thing that we've learned is this, is that if Jesus is our not only our savior, but he's also our Lord, there should be some signs. There should be some fruit in our lives that display that. Amen. In other words, if Jesus is our Lord, we should see the fruit of obedience in our life. If Jesus is our Lord, we should see the fruit of surrender in our life. If Jesus is our Lord, we should see the fruit of sanctification or the process of trying to be more and more like him on a daily basis. Amen. 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 So today we're going to just keep skipping on down that purple brick road, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are going to uh, talk about a topic. I'm going to tell you, people don't want to talk about this topic. Yep. They don't want to. They don't want to. Uh, folks at the east side were mad at me today. <laughs> They couldn't wait to get me out of there, man. If you don't get up out of here and head to the north, man, they was kicking me out. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Man, I, I walked in here and said, what's wrong? I was mad. Uh, nah, but... Uh, 
I want to talk about a topic today, again, that, 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 that we don't really like to talk about, but we really need to. And we're going to be covering chapter three in the Purple Book. So if you've done that, basically kind of what we're doing is you should be working a little bit ahead. So this really should be a review for you. You should have completed this, and this will be kind of a review. But if not, if Hey, well, you, you'll catch up, but we're in chapter three, and today we're going to talk about the dreaded R word, repentance. Repentance. Not one amen. Uh huh. See, okay. Yeah, I got some of that east side. Okay, I see what y'all are doing. Today, I want to talk to you on this topic. I want to talk to you about the real on uh, the real of repentance. The real when it comes to repentance. Now, if you're like me, which I know you are, and you live in Las Vegas, you are dealing with a particular phenomenon right now uh, that's happening literally all over the city. What is that phenomenon that we are dealing with? Pastor, let me tell you exactly what it is. If you have gone to the grocery store, or specifically, do we have any Costco folks in the house? Yeah, Costco, yeah, yeah. Any Sam's people? Okay, well, okay. All right, we'll pray for y'all that y'all get saved. Yeah, y'all get delivered one day, come to the promised land. Anyway, um, uh, and it's probably this way uh, there as well. But the phenomena is this, Costco, Sam, for some reason, for some reason, it is nearly impossible to find toilet paper in Las Vegas. This is a Costco, and all of this is normally filled with toilet paper. But for some, have y'all had problems finding toilet paper? Y'all haven't. Y'all must be blessed and highly favored. I'm telling you. Now, here's the thing. Now, now I guess, because we went to like two Costco and couldn't find any. None. But I got the hookup. Oh, y'all like, y'all should have went to Sam's. Huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Touche. Touche. Look, look, for all you non sans folks, I got the hookup. So I'll tell y'all, just come see me afterwards. I'll tell y'all where to go. You know. But here's the situation. Some people are saying, well, it's because of a strike. You, you know, uh, this thing happened on the East Coast and, and, and this, that, and the other. And because of strike, ah, there's going to be no toilet paper. So we got to go out and get it all right now. <laughs> Others are giving other reasons. Well, this happened and that happened, and, and, this is, and then that's why there's going to be a shortage on toilet paper. Saw a picture. So, all you Costcoites, you know, when you go to Costco, you know, you can get your regular basket, you know, for your normal, everyday type stuff. Or if you really want to do some work at Costco, you get one of the big orange flatbed things. You know what I'm talking about? The, the flat, so you can just stack it all the way up to the top, right? I saw pictures last week of people leaving Costco with the big orange things, toilet paper stacked up to this high. Oh, come on. That's not nice. I, hey, it's the truth. So, but why are we talking about toilet paper? I don't know. Tell us. I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> now, I want you to think about that because yeah, I don't know. Again, we spent all day yesterday running around a couple of different Costco's just trying to find, you know. But uh, um, I want you to think about this for a second. The news or social media says... Something is coming, a potential problem, and everyone <gasps> panics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reaction is, oh, I gotta buy the with my toilet paper. <laughs> that's the 
that's the reaction. That's why you see a picture like that, toilet paper gone, because people panicked. Amen? Amen. So, many of these same people who are panicking, oh, the sky is falling, I need my Sherman. <laughs> many of these same people have read Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2 says this. It says, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Huh. Now, these people have read this. Repent of your sins. Turn to God because the kingdom is near. He's coming. And the same people who panic and react to the toilet paper display absolutely no panic, no concern when they read that. Preach. Come on, preach. Nothing changes. Oh, you say Jesus is coming? Huh. Okay. All right. Oh, he, he's on his way. All right. No problem. No toilet paper? <laughs> Again. It produces no action in them hearing that. Now, even though we can't tell sometimes, repentance is actually a verb. It's an action word, right? right. right? It requires effort and action on our part. Right. See, Again, repentance is a word we, we probably don't really focus on it enough uh, in the church uh, these days because, you know, we have a tendency to focus on what Jesus did for us by forgiving our sins, and we are right to focus on that. But similar to sanctification or the process of growing, repentance, watch this, is a responsibility of a believer to not just be forgiven, but to turn away from sin. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen? I want you to say that with me. Say repentance, repentance. Is, the is the responsibility of a believer. Of One more time. Repentance, repentance. is the responsibility, responsibility of a believer. When we look in the scripture, what do we see that's being preached, especially throughout the New Testament? We see John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist preach? He preached repentance. We see Jesus. What is it that Jesus preached? Jesus preached repentance. We see Paul. We see Peter. What did the disciples preach? They preached repentance. So when we think about that word repentance, many of us understand it, uh, kind of what it means at its core, which when we talk about repenting, it literally it means to do a 180, to turn away from sin. And I want to start with that definition of today of repentance, and I want to look at what I think is the picture perfect example of repentance in the scripture. By the way, before I do that, can we give Israel a hand, that young man right there who's starting to help out here and serving uh, and getting my podium out and getting some stuff set up. Uh, great to see a young man like that. Uh, 13? Yeah. 12, 12 years old, your brother, so, okay, yeah, 12 years old, already serving in the house of the Lord, so God bless you for that. So, let me give you a definition of repentance that we can work off of today, and that's simply this, repentance is a change of mind or 
purpose. A change of mind, direction, and or purpose. So, it means, when we are talking about repentance, it means a genuine, a total, a complete, a thorough changing of the mind and mindset as it relates to sin. Repentance means a changed view. It means a changed feeling and also a changed purpose. You see, true repentance is threefold. It's threefold. When there's true repentance, there's a change in the mind or having to do with your intellect. There's a change in your heart having to do with your emotions. And there's a change in your actions, which has to do with the physical. Amen? Amen. So let's look back at Matthew chapter 3, the verse we opened up with. And let's look at that in the Amplified, because I think the Amplified summarizes that really well. It says this. It says, repent, change your inner self. Your old way of thinking, regret past sins, and live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Huh. He's coming! Huh. Okay. Okay. In other words... True repentance, watch this, is more than just me saying, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. True repentance is my mind, is my heart, is my actions all coming into alignment and agreement that no, we ain't going back. Amen. A, a true repentance puts me on a new pathway to a new purpose. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you one of my favorite stories from the word today. And, and, and uh, because it's really one of those stories that every single one of us can relate to. It serves really, again, as the picture perfect example of repentance. We're talking new heart, new mind, new action. And this story is found in Luke chapter 15. And I want to share with you a few realities when it comes to repentance and the uh, sin that we all struggle to overcome. So if you are familiar with your word, or you may not be familiar with the address, but you know this story, this is the story in Luke 15. Jesus is giving different examples of things that are lost, right? He talks about the lost coin, and he, he starts giving all of these examples. But the highlight of Luke 15 is he begins to talk about the lost son or the prodigal son. Now, just to kind of give you a little bit of summary, if you haven't heard the story before, what you have is you have a man, a father, and this father has two sons. He has an older son and a younger son. You know the story. And the younger son, he goes to his father and he basically says, listen, <laughs> Uh, I don't care about you. I don't care about this relationship. In fact, I want my share of the inheritance right now. Now, 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 now keep in mind, you typically don't get inheritance until someone dies. Right, right, right. right. So this son, in essence, is saying, listen, I don't care. You may as well be dead to me. I just want. I want the money. Give it to me. Don't care about the relationship. I want the money. So what does the father do? As much as it breaks his heart, he gives him the inheritance. And what does he do? Right? What does he do? Right? We're going to use the ELV version today. Right? He goes off to Las Vegas. 
blows his money on the strip, goes out to Pahrump and does his thing out there. He blows all of his money in wild living, right? It gets so bad for him. He's broke. <laughs> He's in a land far, far away from home. And it gets so bad. You know how bad it gets? I saw this on, uh, I'm going to tell you. I saw this on Dirty Jobs. That show, remember that show, Dirty Jobs? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw this on Dirty Jobs before I moved to Las Vegas. Apparently, there's some big, famous pig farm. Y'all you, you know about that big pig farm that used to be here? Like, right over there? Like, it's terrible. Like, I know that they moved the pig farm somewhere wet, but it still stinks over there, like, years ago. Right? He found himself at a pig farm like that. Yeah. Right? Not able to even eat the scraps he's giving them. Far off from his plan, his purpose, his destiny. So far off. So this is where we jump back into the text. By the way, for y'all that don't know, like I said the ELV version, I was like joking like the Elvin summary. That's what I was meaning. <laughs> Y'all like, what version is that? I don't seen that one before. I was just paraphrasing. I was just giving y'all a summary. Y'all like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> y'all like, I'm going to get that ELV version. That's a. <laughs> I wish it was on Amazon, bro. I wish it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, so that's a summary of what's happened in chapter 15. So let's jump in at chapter 15. We're going to begin at verse 17 and look at the first couple of verses and we'll walk through this. And as we walk through this, what I want us to do is I want us to see what it is that repentance uh, 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 does in our lives, in our hearts. Amen. All right. So verse 17 of chapter 15 says this. It says, when he finally, say finally, finally, came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have enough to spare food. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, watch this, father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Will you please take me on as a hired servant? I don't care about getting my old room back. I don't care about getting my old clothes back. If you just let me on the property, I will just be, if you could just do that. Yeah, yeah. Good. The very first thing I need to let you know about repentance is this. Repentance starts with realization. Repentance starts with realization. Look at the scripture. The scripture says he finally came to his senses. He finally had a moment of realization. He finally realized that, you know what? I was not created for the pig pen. Yeah. My purpose is not there. That is not my purpose. I was not created for that. Yeah. Yeah. You see, what he did as he came to his senses, as he came to his realization, what he realized, watch this now, he realized that his sin, the sin is not who he was, but it's what he did. Amen. Amen. I said he realized that his sin, he came to his senses. I am not this. This is just what I'm doing. I don't know about you, but I've had some people in my life that were very, very close to me. I love them dearly. They came and they said, you know, I'm struggling. Uh, 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 well, I'm not even struggling. I am this. My sexual identity is this. I identify as, and I, and I said, you know what? I said, no, you're not. I said, you're not that. I said, you're just doing those type of things. That's not who you are. That's just what you're doing. That's right. 
And do you know, just a few years later, they came out of that, they got delivered, they got married, they, they did, so, and they said, you are absolutely right. I was just doing those things. That's not who I was. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So watch this. He realized, in again, in that moment, that his sin was starving him and it was leaving him stranded. He realized that the sin was selfish. And watch this. I've never seen this before until yesterday. It's like, I read this a million times. I just saw this yesterday. But watch this. He says that the sin impacted God and heaven. Did you see that? He said, I've sinned against you and heaven. What? His selfishness, his sin impacted heaven. Now, he realized again that in this, his sin is causing him to give up the plan for his life. So, repentance starts with realization. Watch this, next verse, uh, 20 through 21. So, I love this. So, he did what? Returned home. Returned home to his father. He returned. He repented. He returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, as he did with all of us. Filled with love and compassion, he sauntered over ever so gingerly no. to his son. No. 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 He ran to his son, embraced him, kissed him. His son said, Father, I have sinned against you and heaven. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Repentance not only starts with realization, but let me tell you what else repentance does. Repentance makes the father run. <laughs> repentance makes the father run. Another way of saying it is this, is that the quickest way for you to get God to come close to where you are is to repent. Because when you turn, guess what? You'll see him running you down. You see, the, the, the beautiful part about this scripture is God is willing to run. Okay, let, let, let me explain that to you. God is willing to run, right? For those of you, let me ask you this question. Can you ever recall a scripture I know Ed, my, 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 my Bible theologian, Ed, in the back. <laughs> Let me ask y'all this. Do you ever remember? Now, now, I remember a scripture that says Jesus wept. Y'all yep. know that, right? Jesus wept. Yep. Do you ever remember seeing a scripture that said Jesus ran? No. Hmm. no. I, I've never read it. I've never read anywhere where Jesus ran anywhere. I heard that, I read he walked. I heard he rode a donkey sometimes. But he never ran. I know sometimes Mary and Martha said, Jesus, if you would have run, you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Right? But what we see is Jesus never runs. But in this, it's so clear that God is willing to run to you when you repent. Amen. See, you have to understand this, especially back in those days, it was considered undignified for the patriarch to run. You went to the patriarch, he didn't come to you. 
El jefe, boss, no, no, no. You ran to him. But again, it was, it was, it was not dignified. This shows us that despite the indignity, God is willing to run to us. God is willing to be humiliated because of how much he loves us. Now you say, that's not true. If you don't believe that, just guys, Jesus. Jesus was humiliated for all of us because of... So, let me keep going. So he, he comes and he says, I've sinned against heaven and against you. And the dad says this, but the father said to his servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his fingers and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. Repentance starts with realization. Repentance makes the father run. Repentance leads to restoration. Yes, yes. Repentance leads to restoration. You see, what we're seeing here is this, is that what sin had stripped from him, repentance began to restore to him. Did y'all see that? I said, when sin had stripped from him, repentance began to restore. In other words, he, his, his robe, he said, quick, get him a robe. In other words, cover up his shame. Amen. Amen. Don't let him walk around like that. Cover up his shame. Get him a robe. Get him a ring. In other words, you need to, uh, uh, the, the, the authority that sin had stripped away from him, I'm giving him back his ring. I'm giving him back his authority. And then he says, quick, get him some sandals. In other words, uh, not only did the sandals represent a, a, a new foundation for him to stand on, but they also represented a new walk in a new direction. Can I ask you this morning, what has sin stripped from you this morning? What is sin stripped from you? What, what, what is sin just, just completely uh, ravaged you from that you need God to restore to you today? Hmm. Watch what he says in verse 24. Again, the father, the father says this, for this son of mine, which was dead, has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he's found. So guess what? Now we party. Now we party. Repentance starts with realization. Repentance makes the father run. Repentance leads to restoration. Repentance, watch this, resurrects what sin caused to die. Again, the plan for his life, the purpose for his life, the path for his life, all have seemed to have been dead. When he's sitting there looking at a bunch of pork rolling around in the mud and all this stuff, he is sitting there looking at that thinking, man, mm -mm, this isn't it. This is not it. Everything that sin had stripped away from him, it, 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 that, all that old sin, that's dead, man. That plan is dead. But however, the father says, now it's alive. My, my, my son that's dead, he is alive. And what I'm saying this morning is there's just something in our lives that sin has caused to die in your life. There's a plan for your life. There's a purpose for your life that sin has caused to die. And matter of fact, it's been so dead so long, and like, like, like Lazarus, surely it stinks by now. There's been something that you've given up on. I gotta calm, I'm getting too high. Okay. There's been something that's been so dead for so long. And it's just waiting for a declaration of life from the Father. 
That's all I was waiting for. That's it. All right, let me keep going, okay? Let me keep going, let me keep going. All right, I'm gonna switch verses now. I'm gonna go to the Acts real quick because I wanna show you two other things uh, 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 about Holy Spirit, and then we'll be done. Acts chapter two. Um, this is amazing in so many ways because this is a message given by Peter. This is a message given by the same person who said, uh, God, I got your back. I ain't going nowhere. You my man. Hey, hey you go. Hey, man, I ride or die. We not. Yeah. Tell them to bring it. As soon as they showed up. <clears throat> <laughs> that's Peter right that same dude scared hiding emboldened by the Holy Spirit now stands before 3,000 folks or more and just begins to preach and he says this he says, Peter, watch this in Acts 2, 37 through 39. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, he gives them a process. He says, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and watch this, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise, I love this, is to you, your children, and all of those far away who have been called by the Lord our God. That's us. So beyond all the things that we've talked about as well, what we see in this text is that repentance releases Holy Spirit. Hey, yeah. hey. Yeah. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Repentance releases the Holy Spirit. He gives you the plan. Repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 Right? And he says that this is a generational blessing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a spiritual promise, a spiritual inheritance, watch this, that you can pass down to your kids and to their kids. But you know what? Looking at this, I see that that blessing may start with your own repentance. It may start with your own repentance. Maybe there's somebody here today, you say, you know, I've been praying for the Holy Spirit. I just need that. Okay, well, maybe you need to start with repenting. Amen. Maybe it hadn't come because you hadn't repented yet. All right, last thing. Repentance starts with realization. Repentance makes the father run. Repentance leads to restoration. Repentance resurrects what sin has caused to die. And repentance releases Holy Spirit. Last thing we'll see in Romans chapter six. <laughs> Man, it says this. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? <laughs> of course not. Since we've died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten huh, that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, we also may live new lives. Last thing is this. Repentance reflects Jesus in baptism. In baptism. Our church has two ordinances, two things that we hold dear. And two things that were commanded by Christ. One is communion, which we're getting ready to do in a second. The other is water baptism. And the thing that we have to understand about water baptism is water baptism has to first of all be preceded by repentance. 
Amen? You you got to be repentant to be uh, 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 baptized in water. Because if not, what happens is simply this. You go in the water a dry devil and you come out of the water a wet devil. You see, <laughs> he was preaching all kind of crazy about the ELV version of the devil. <laughs> see, what we have to realize is this. The, it, it, the scripture's clear that Jesus died to himself. He was buried, and then he emerged from the grave. When we get baptized, we are dying to ourselves and we're emerging from a watery grave with a power to live a new life, to walk a new walk with a new covering and new authority from God. Yes. One of the coolest things that I'll never forget, uh, we were, I, was, I was at another church and, and uh, we were doing baptisms and I just baptized this young lady and we were in the back and we were, um, uh, uh, everybody was kind of waiting their turn uh, to, to go change and um, literally like two minutes earlier I had just said in the name of the Father, Son, I just had brought her out of the water and she walked up to me, <clears throat> she says, ah, uh, Hi, Pastor Elvin. I like to introduce myself. I'm like, I just baptized you like two minutes ago. I know exactly who you are. She says, no, you don't. So this is the new me. <laughs> this is my new walk. So what I want to do is we've seen the order he laid it out so clear. Repent. Be baptized. Receive the Holy Spirit. Maybe some of you here are somewhere along that journey. But it starts with repentance. And maybe some of you, God has been talking to you. Maybe even through this message. Yeah, I need to quit playing. I need to turn from that. I really need to repent. I need to follow what he told me to do by being baptized in water. I need to die to my old self. I need to leave that in that watery grave. I need to be resurrected with new power, with new purpose, with a new pathway. If that's you, we want to give you that opportunity here in just a few weeks, we are going to do a baptism, and that will be on October the 20th uh, here at the North Campus during our service, um, our 11 o'clock service. So if this message has convicted you or has, has caused you to, man, I, I want to take the next step and, and I want to be obedient and follow him, uh, you have the opportunity. We're going to.